Mixing up a ver and tener is like confusing a hammer with a screwdriver. They are great tools, but we use them for very different tasks. In this video, I'm going to teach you what the difference between tener and haber is. I'm also going to tell you when and when not to use these verbs, and I'm going to give you a quiz so you can practice these verbs. Hi everyone, this is Daniela from Tell Me in Spanish y estoy aquí para ayudarte a hablar español de forma más natural. I have always said that direct translation is the cry wolf of languages. Take haber and tener as an example. They are both directly translated as to have. However, we never use them interchangeably. Let me show you how you're going to use this verb. When you think about haber, you're going to think about an assistance. Haber is your assistant in Spanish. This means that you are going to use this verb to form compound tenses. It's going to help you build the perfect, the perfect present tense, the past perfect tense, and everything that's finished with perfect tense. To do this, you are going to use Obviously, a ver plus a verb in participle form. I'm going to leave you a link on the description just in case you need to check how to form participles. As an assistant, a ver also helps you express existence. I know <laughs> this naming is kind of weird, but existence simply means that you're going to describe or to list the things that there are in a place. To do this meaning, you're going to use the impersonal form I plus a noun. And finally, this Spanish assistant also helps you express impersonal obligation. What's up with the naming, right? I know, like this naming is weird, but I'm going to show you what impersonal obligation means. So to form this meaning, you're going to use I que plus an infinitive. Let me give you some examples. No he tenido vacaciones en mucho tiempo. I have not had vacations in a long time. I hope my fiancé takes a hint. Example 2. Hay un pastel en la mesa. There is a cake on the table. This is the happiest day of my life. Forget about those vacations. I can live with the cake. As you can see, this is what we call existence. You're simply stating or describing the things that are in that room. Example number three, hay que limpiar la mesa. We have to clean the table, the table or the table needs to be clean. This is impersonal obligation and we call it impersonal in Spanish because we're not pointing at a subject. I'm not saying yo, I'm not saying you, I'm saying we have to clean the table. I'm not pointing at a specific person. I know in English this feels a little bit personal because I'm saying we, but in Spanish we don't have a specific person in mind, okay? And finally, I want to remind you, like any other verb, haber also has some idiomatic expressions. In this case, these idiomatic expressions are not going to share any of the meanings that I just taught you. For example, check this one. No hay de que. Yeah, we're using the impersonal form I, but in this case, no hay de que is used to say you're welcome. Check this other one. Había una vez. Once upon a time, that's the structure we use to start a story. If a ver is your assistant, Tener is the owner. Tener owns everything that it touches. And because of that, you're going to use it to express possession, to talk about your belongings. To do this, you're going to use tener plus a number if you want to count how many things you own and a noun. You're also going to use tener to talk about relationships. A lot of people say that relationships fall into possession we do this in Spanish and you're going to follow the same structure. Tener plus a number plus a noun. And check this example because this one is a funny one and it can be confusing when you compare it with haber. You're also going to use tener to express obligation. 
en the structure looks very similar. Tener que plus infinitive verb. Let me give you some examples. Liam tiene dos gatos. Liam has two cats. Yo tengo dos hermanos. I have two siblings. Number three. ¿Tienes novio? Do you have a boyfriend? This is the more direct way to ask someone if they are single. And number four. Check this one because this is the one that can confuse you a little bit. Hay que limpiar la mesa. That's a bear. Versus tengo que hacer de comer. I have to cook. Yeah, of course. How am I going to eat? Tengo que hacer de comer. If you check the difference here, in this case, I'm conjugating tener. Yo tengo. And that simple action is going to change everything. And I mean it. In this case, yo tengo. I'm already pointing at the subject. Yo. It's me who has to go through that awful duty. In this case, hay que limpiar la mesa. I'm not saying who is going to do it, okay? So keep that in mind when you want to express obligation. Are you going to point at someone to do something? Or are you going to play safe and not command someone to do something? Now that you understand the differences between these verbs, I'm going to give you a quiz so you can practice them. Your job is very simple. I'm going to give you fill in the blanks sentences. You're just going to complete them based on the context. Number one, yo, blank, dos gatos. Number two, ella, blank, que entregar el proyecto. Number three, blank, tres personas en el restaurante. Number four, todavía no, blank, hecho la tarea. Number five, and be careful because this one has two blank spaces. Five, Saúl, blank, un coche azul. Yo nunca, blank, tenido uno. Leave your answers in the comments and I'll give you feedback if you need it. Before we finish this video, I want to give you some extra resources in case you want to practice this topic a little bit more. The first one is a video in Spanish. It's the same lesson. It's just so you get to practice your listening a little bit more. And the second one is a guide on tener versus haber. I know we went through this, but in this guide, you're going to find more examples so you can reinforce these topics. That's it for today, guys. I hope you liked the video. And if you did, please hit the like button and I hope to see you soon. Bye.